Just gonna do a quick pickups video. Uh, don't know if I've said this before, but I live in Canada. Went on a road trip down to the Oregon coast, so these are the things that I picked up uh, along the way. Mostly I paid full retail. I had one minor find, um, but uh, I'll talk about the places that I stopped at and what I got. Uh, so this, these ones I bought at Super Smash Games in Olympia. Uh, not, I mean, not super good deals, but have a virtual boy I've been slowly trying to pick up the games I think this is one of the last cheaper games it was $15 US and this was from Super Smash games in Olympia uh, yeah so that's just another game from virtual boy I think I have four now uh, the other thing I picked up from Super Smash games was this game and it might seem funny it's kind of uh, a weird I mean it's a bullfrog title I really like bullfrog but one of the reasons I picked it up was that I played it on the PC I have the PC I still have the PC version and I thought it'd be really interesting I remember really enjoying this game and I thought it'd be really interesting to to uh, to see what it was like to play it on the Sega Genesis so grab that it has the instructions oh it doesn't have the instructions but it has some of the stuff, the cartridge is a little bit taped up. Um, just for Andrew's sake, this power monitor is old enough to be on floppy disk. So it's a, quite a bit of an older game and this should be complete. I was pretty meticulous with all my old games. So I'm gonna fire that up at some point and play it and see if it's as good. Uh, if, it, if I don't like it as much as this one, maybe I'll try and get this running on a DOS box sometime. So. The thing I was most excited about at Super Smash Games was this Game Boy Player. And I remember I was asking about, so this is, this is just the bottom of the Game Boy Player without the disc. Um, I remember asking another game store and they wanted 40 or $50, and, but it doesn't work without a disc. However, the good news is, is that I found a disc at a garage sale. In fact, I got it for free. Uh, and I was a little late. A guy had some box, he, like he didn't have a big garage, so he had a box on the side of the street and he was kind of sitting there. He had a few things to sell. A guy was already there picking up GameCube games and he picked this up and he was reading it out loud. He was like, Game Boy Player Startup Disc. Game Boy, and he just didn't understand what it was. Wound up buying two of the GameCube games that left this one. And I was just standing there going, oh, please put it down, please put it down. He put it down. Page up asked the guy how much he wanted for it, and he was like, oh, I'll just take it. So putting that together with this, I have something really valuable, and this at Super Smash Games was only $15, US dollars. So I was pretty stoked about that to get, I basically have now a game, a GameCube Game Boy player for $15. So I haven't tried it out yet. The disc is, a, the disc is in pretty good condition. I don't expect that it won't work, but a little bit of scratching, I don't know, near the top, but it, it doesn't look like deep scratches, and if, if it doesn't work, just one scratch looks a little sketchy. So I'll, I'll actually have to see if this works. I haven't done that yet. So that was exciting. Uh, the next game find, I guess I'll do it in order-ish. Yeah, I want to do it in order. So this one was actually the most decent find for the good price, though. A Wii game. I just looking through the Wii games, and this was two ninety nine, and I think it's worth twenty dollars or something like that. So still a decent find. Um, kind of, it's Pikmin one for the GameCube, but reworked to work on the Wii. So uh, and in just absolutely pristine condition. The disc is almost flawless. You've got the instructions there. Uh, so that was a super nice pickup. It was two ninety nine US at the Goodwill in in Tillamook. So by this point, we're in Tillamook. All of the previous things were from. Uh, Olympia and in Tillamook I only picked up one thing they had yeah, anyway, I only picked up one thing at, at the place in Tillamook and that was Indiana Jones game it was five bucks I kind of have a soft spot for Indiana Jones and I've liked a lot of the games and one day I might get enough of them together I can do a video on on Indiana Jones games I've got a few of the PC ones which I really enjoyed a few of the from LucasArts a few of the adventure ones from LucasArts as well so these are sort of picking up, I think, uh, picking up, uh, catching up with the um, the ones on consoles from that era as well. So that was five dollars, and this was at Recycle Games in Tillamook. Tillamook also has a uh, retro video gaming store. 
have a fair bit of stuff, um, but this I, there wasn't a lot that I that I wanted, so I wanted to speaking this just so just with the one thing. Uh, my final pickup, and actually this was at Super Smash Games, and I almost picked it up, but I had spent a fair bit of money. Like I think the Power Monger was eight. Uh, I was about fifty bucks. It was like fifteen, fifteen, and twelve fifty or something like that. So I kind of passed on this. I should have bought it because it was actually. Uh, about the same price and I think it had the instructions but again another Indiana Jones game the young Indiana Jones I sort of have mixed feelings about it the, uh, the young Indiana Jones Chronicles the idea was really cool but um, you know maybe the this TV series wasn't that good they sort of did like one season but it did have a lot of backstory about Indiana Jones and how he grew up and how he came to know so many languages and it was enjoyable from that point of view so yeah, so I just, it was a one week road trip. Uh, we went all the way down to Tillamook on the Oregon coast and then came all the way back to uh, Birch Bay for another couple days and stayed there and went into Bellingham. So this was from Reset Games in Bellingham, Recycle Games in Tillamook, Goodwill in Tillamook, and then uh, Super, Smash, Super Smash Games in Olympia, Washington. So uh, yeah, that's what I picked up. Let me know what you think. Thanks a lot. So just as a test, see if uh, I have a working game GameCube Game Boy Player disc put in uh, Pokemon Sapphire and we'll turn it on and uh, see if it boots up that is looking pretty promising sure I've been here before so I'm not sure how to play this it just let's just try changing it and see so I didn't seem to think there was a game so I'll pull it out and put it back in because that sometimes gives it a better uh, context and then it'll work tend to work so change the game pack. to see something come up, but I am not. So I know that this was tested in the store, so it should work, but I'll go in this. Okay, so Sapphire wasn't working. I put in Emerald and it looks like it's working, so I'll just show you that. So funny that, funny that Sapphire wouldn't work, um, although I haven't tested it on something else in a while. But it should have for Sapphire gone straight to the game instead of seeing it a white screen, and this is what it's doing for Emerald. Yeah. And just using the, the regular GameCube controller. Yes, the battery's probably dry. screen and this is of course just a small monitor playing on the GameCube so perfect have a working GameCube